back and consider our rental truck problem from the from the last video. If you recall, we had a $125 rental fee to use their truck, and they were also charging us $2 per mile for wear and tear on the vehicle. We were able to write an equa a linear equation, and we knew that because we had a constant rate of change. Our linear equations, remember, were of this form, P equals A plus B to the N. A is my starting or fixed cost, which was the $125 rental fee. B was the rate of change, which in this case is $2 per mile. And this was my equation that I came up with. N represented the number of miles driven. And P would represent the price in dollars of renting of our full rental. So we have this nice general equation here that we're able to use and refer to. And once you have a formula like this, it's great because we can use this to make plans and predictions. If we know the number of miles that we've driven, we can figure out what the price would be without waiting for the invoice to come in. Or if I have a certain price that I have to stay under because of my budget, I can figure out how many miles that would allow me to drive. Let's look at both of those scenarios and see how this would work. If I know that I'm going to have to drive 60 miles on my rental truck, then I can figure out the price for my rental. P is equal to 125 plus 2 times the number of miles, which is 60 miles. Now, if you're solving this by hand, remember you have to follow order of operations. So you'd have to multiply the 2 times the 60 first. This gives you 120 plus the 125 is going to give me $245 for the full cost of the rental if I drive 60 miles. Now let's suppose that we have, um, maybe we have a moving budget of $300 for moving expenses. Well, in this case, I still can use my formula but this time I have a price that I'm limited by and I want to figure out how many miles I'm going to be able to drive that truck. So we still go back to our equation. P equals 125 plus 2N. But this time we know the P value is going to be 300. And the N value is what I'm going to have to find. Now, in this last example, we could just plug this into our calculator. Our scientific calculator would do all the order of operations, and I just would get the answer of $245. In this case, I want to know what N is, but right now N is tied up with other things on the same side of the equation. So we're going to have to do some algebra. Um, remember to solve an equation like this. The first thing that we have to do, we have to get rid of both the 125 and the 2. We always get rid of things that are added or subtracted first. So in this case, we're going to subtract 125 from each side. When we do that, we're going to get 175 on the left. Here, the 125 went away, and I'm left just with the 2n. The n is still not by itself yet, so I am not done with this problem yet. Right now, the 2 is being multiplied by the n, so I'm going to have to divide by 2 on each side. Now. My N is finally alone, and on the other side of the equation, I end up with my answer, which is 87.5. Now recall, what, a, what, what does this 87.5 represent? It was our variable N, and N was our number of miles driven. So what that means is for $300 worth of expenses, I can only drive 87.5 miles. So for example, maybe you can only afford to go four trips back and forth from your old apartment to your new apartment, uh, but not five trips because you'd go over that mileage limit. So you might need to pack a little bit more carefully. Um, and being able to make that kind of a plan 
based on information and limits that you have is a very valuable skill to, to uh, be able to develop. All right, in the next video, we'll look at a couple other examples just to kind of get the hang of how this uh, process of coming up with a linear equation model and then using that linear equation model to answer questions works.